The English language can be whack. Put together the weird spelling, arbitrary rules, and confusing vocabulary, and things can get pretty ugly. I mean, where do a word like whack even come from? And how can something be both pretty and ugly at the same time? After hearing this list, you'll question a lot of things about the English language. I'm Mike with List25, and here are 25 reasons the English language makes no sense. Twenty-five. Rules are more like guidelines. The one thing that stands out in your memory the most in English or grammar class is that every rule has an exception. This sounds quite true, although usually there are other grammar or spelling rules that override that other rule, hence the exception. Not to mention that each discipline slash area seems to have a slightly different rule book. Here, here's a common one. I before E except after C. Did you know there's another part to the mnemonic? Or when sounded as A as in neighbor or way? Want an exception to this rule about exceptions? Efficient, ceiling, feisty, weird. 24. The word ending O-U-G-H has several pronunciations. There are some things that you have to just practice and memorize. The O-U-G-H ending is unfortunately one of those things. O-U-G-H can sound like off, as in cough, and trough. The GH can be silent, while the OU sounds like the alphabet name O in DO, although, and thorough. The GH can be silent, while the OU sounds like you just saw a cute puppy or baby, as in brought, sought, and thought. OUGH is like UFF in rough, tough, and enough. Or like OW with a silent GH in plow, drought, and bow, and it's like OO with a silent GH in through. <laughs> 23. English has a lot of short idiomatic expressions. While English may be a piece of cake for you, it's very difficult for people who are hitting the books and studying every day. Expressions like piece of cake and hitting the books are expressions that are very strange if taken literally. They can really throw people off or confuse them, and we use them a lot. Why do your fridge and dishwasher run, but your stove and oven are just on or off? How can you be into a hobby when you're sitting at your desk? Why would you hit the sack in order to fall asleep? Well, the world may never know. 22. There are so many tenses. When I was in sixth grade, my grammar teacher made us conjugate the sentence, she likes to dance, in all the tenses in English, for all points of view. Whew. There are 12, yes, 12 tenses in English and some are difficult to translate meaning into other languages. Here they are. You have tenses in the present. Simple present, present progressive, present perfect, present perfect progressive. She dances, she is dancing, she has danced, she has been dancing. You also have tenses in the past. Simple past, past progressive, past perfect, past perfect progressive. She danced, she was dancing, she had danced, she had been dancing. You have tenses in the future. Simple future, future progressive, future perfect, future perfect progressive. She will dance, she will be dancing, she will have danced, she will have been dancing. Whew, my grammar teacher would be proud. 21, and so many vowel sounds. There are technically only five vowels in the English alphabet, A, E, I, O, and U. However, there are about 20 vowel sounds in English, making it difficult to know when to pronounce each vowel which way. Of course, there are rules and exceptions too. For those whose native language has a solid five vowel sound, English can be maddening. 20, not to mention random silent letters. There are many languages out there that are phonetic, meaning that if the letter is there, you pronounce it. English is one of those languages that has a lot of silent letters. Think about these words. Lamb and numb have silent Bs. Scissors and muscles have silent Cs. And wrestle and wrinkle have silent Ws. Let's not forget to mention the word Q. Not one silent letter, not two, but four. 19. The way you pronounce the words in a sentence can change the meaning. Take the sentence, Jim didn't steal the purse. Depending on which word is emphasized, it can really impact the meaning. Jim didn't steal the purse. Well, someone did, but it wasn't Jim. 
Jim didn't steal the purse. We'll stop saying he did. In case we weren't clear, he didn't do it. Jim didn't steal the purse. He was just borrowing it for a moment, honest. Jim didn't steal the purse. He stole the backpack, not the purse. 18. There are more to comma rules than you might realize. No, it's not just pull one where you hear a pause like some people may tell you. English has a lot of specific punctuation rules regarding commas, and it's an area where many native speakers make mistakes as well. 17. Prepositions are beastly. Why do you sit in a car but on an airplane? When do you say you're going to the store, and when do you say you're going in the store? Why do you hang out on the beach but at a park? Good questions. Yay prepositions! <laughs> 16. Levels of formality are expressed more through vocabulary than formal slash informal pronouns. In many languages, you can express respect and formality by changing the pronoun and its corresponding verb conjugation. For example, in Spanish, you address your grandparents and your boss using usted, but your friends you address using the pronoun tú. In English, both usted and tú are expressed as you, so we express formality more in the vocabulary used. Slang and curse words are reserved for close peers and friends, but they're used a lot less with elders or business superiors. 15. Two words. Phrasal verbs. You might be asking yourself what a phrasal verb is, but we use them all the time. Phrasal verbs are two or three part verbs that include a verb with an adverb or preposition. Here are some examples. You should look into, consider, explore, subscribing to our channel. We get into, discuss extensively, a lot of topics that you will look forward to, be excited, hearing about each week. Put these verbs into a translator and you'll get some very confusing results. 14. Some words have spellings that make absolutely no sense. Much of this has to do with English borrowing many words from other languages. Well, here are a few examples. Colonel, conscience, and indict. 13. Verbs can be used as nouns and nouns can be used as verbs. English is very flexible with how you can use words within sentences. The word dance is typically a verb, but in English you can use it as a noun. Dancing is her favorite activity. You can also use a word that's usually a noun, but you can use it as a verb. She friended me on social media. 12. Slang can be nonsensical and confusing. Each generation has its own set of words that the older generation thinks is whack. However, when you're young, you only want to use dope words because they're so groovy. YOLO. Yeah, I know, it's hard for me to say that too. <sighs> Yeet. <laughs> hey, I'm the bee's knees. I'm just too hip to be square. <laughs> oh, goodness. 11. Some words are just evil, even for native speakers. Some words... <laughs> Feel like your mouth is full of food when you say them. Words like rural and horror. R the rural juror. 10. Some letters change their minds. Is it C as in cake or C as in city? 9. There's a specific order of adjectives. Why is it okay to say the big purple house and not the purple big house? Well, because in English, there's an order of adjectives, and as a native speaker, you probably don't even realize you follow it. However, if you are just learning English, it's at first more memorization than intuition. The order goes opinion, size, age, shape, color, origin, material, purpose, qualifier, and noun. You know, in case you were curious. Eight, there are many ways to make words plural. Books, boxes, babies, oxen, geese, mice, women. While a good majority of plural words end with S, E, S, or I, E, S, there are several others that are totally different. 7. Homonyms. Homonyms are words that have the same spelling or pronunciation but have different meanings. Common examples are the words to, to, and to, and there, there, and there. 6. Homophones. Homophones are words that sound the same, but they're spelled differently and have different meanings. Example would be new and new, seen and seen, and bored and bored. 5. Homographs. 
Homographs are spelled the same but might be pronounced differently and have different meanings. For instance, you can say she's very content with her life or the website has a lot of new content. Another example would be be careful not to tear the pages in the book and he cut the onion and didn't shed a tear. Four, figurative language is as pretty confusing. Figurative language uses words differently from their strict definitions. There are a few different types of figurative language. There are similes. She's as busy as a bee, he's as blind as a bat. Metaphors, life is a highway. He has a heart of stone. Hyperbole, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. My feet are killing me. Oxymoron, awfully good, bittersweet, pretty ugly. Three, the only has flexible placement but changes meaning. This is similar to our pronunciation emphasis because adding this word to various places in the sentence changes the meaning. Let's add only to this sentence. She told him that she loved him. Only she told him that she loved him. No one else told him. She only told him that she loved him. Hmm, what's the big deal? She told only him that she loved him. Well, she didn't tell anyone else. She told him only that she loved him. She didn't say anything else. She told him that she only loved him. It's only love, nothing else. She told him that she loved only him, or she told him that she loved him only. She didn't love anyone else. Woohoo, English. <laughs> Two, commas can also change the meaning of sentences. There's a comma rule in English, <laughs> pun intended, a comma rule, that says if the person you're talking to is named at the end of the sentence, you use a comma before the name. For example, let's go to the store, Cindy. While this doesn't seem like a big deal, it can mean figurative life or death. Let's eat, Grandma. You're suggesting lunch to Grandma. Let's eat, Grandma. Grandma's on the menu. Or Grandma. One. Some nouns you can count, others you cannot. Remember our discussion about making words plural in English? Well, I almost forgot to mention that there are some words that you just can't make plural. Why? Well, because English has something called non-count nouns. These words represent concepts that are abstract or can be measured but not counted. Here are a few common ones. Equipment, homework, traffic, advice, education, water, coffee. So you can't say, I have lots of homeworks or my mother gave me lots of advices. <laughs> How do you know which nouns are non-count? Well, unfortunately, it's a lot of memorization and repetition. So. What are some things you find difficult about the English language? Or what about in your native language? What's something difficult there? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content, including our shorts. And if you can, please become a member to help support us so we can pre keep bringing you this amazing content. Join our Discord, our community is slowly growing. And as always, I love you all, and I'll see you next time. And that's time with an I, not the Y. Be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these videos here or just head to our website at list25.com.